in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. The lights are on and the mics are hot. It's time to get your MMA fix, junkies. Take it away, Big John. Gorgeous George and Goes, are you ready? Junkie Nation, are you ready? Well, let's get it all. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you're listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly goes, our East co-host. Back he's producing today, it's Jael. What up? What up, homes? Not, not much. Bad. Jael, you into hockey? I'm not a big hockey guy. Me neither. Have you But it is game heard? seven, and the crowd will erupt tonight at some point as the Boston Bruins play the... St. Louis Blues, and the winner gets to hold up the cup. The game's in Boston. Go Blues. Go ahead, guys. Have you ever been at a hockey game and ever heard the name, Yo, Jael, be shouted out? Nope. It's just not a hockey name. <laughs> right. We should have known better. Well, well no, I, I had a feeling, but you just never know nowadays. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, it was more of a courtesy. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, I almost could have bet my, if I had a farm, the mm-hmm. proverbial farm on yeah, you, you, could, you could have bet your farm on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And not <laughs> only that, not only does Jael not watch hockey, he could give two f's about hockey. Is my is what I think that he thinks that oh he my God, feels can about. You read hockey. my mind. Oh, oh really? Best friends now. Yeah. Oh I was gonna come to his defense. I was gonna say he thinks it's okay, but it's just too late, and he doesn't want to get into it. Mm, no, no. I, there, there's a lot going on in uh, the Big Apple. There's two teams in every sport, and I, I just. No, Vegas is different. Vegas was like a city that had not much going on on the professional level, and all of a sudden this team just swept us. Mm-hmm. And so I could see a lot of people that couldn't have given those two same Fs that I, I spoke about with uh, Jael, mm-hmm. uh, and they just figured, hey, you know what? Let's 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 give these guys five thousand for a couple seats for the year, yeah. and then th- that arena rocks, man. Plus the team made it to the finals, so I could see a lot of newbies being born in two thousand seventeen. In 2018 here in Sin City, but a city like New York, hell no, man. I feel like if you were at a Latin jazz concert and somebody went, hey, Jael, I think you'd get a couple, who, me? That's where I I would imagine, like, him hanging out on a Saturday. I could see that one. Is that true, Jael? Am I even close? I I, I was was actually at one last weekend, so you're right. Boom! He's going to think we're stalkers pretty soon, man. (laughs) We know everything (laughs) about the guy. What he likes, what he hates. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. We got a fun show planned for today, and we'll start things off with uh, some big news uh, out in London, England, in relation to UFC 242, which is uh, Habib Nurmagomedov and Dustin Poirier uh, in Abu Dhabi. But let me set the table first. Uh, if you want to call into the show, we'd love to hear from you. 877 Fight 93, 877 344 4893. Also, you can communicate with us via Twitter. And this works for not only our show, but all the shows on the channel. At MMA on Sirius XM. I'm at MMA Junkie George and goes is at the go. So it's a just a good way to connect with all the hosts, all the different producers. And, and like I say, it works across all the shows. Uh, Jael, do you have a Twitter handle? I do. At Jael B. Henry. At what? At Jael B. Henry. B. Okay. Henry. All right, cool. You want to spell that out just in case? Sure. Uh, we actually had people like on Luke's show who called in and spelled my name J A I L. So uh, it's J A E L B H E N R Y. Got it. All right. What's the B Henry part? Is your last name Henry and your middle initials B? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm a okay. simple guy. Cool. All right. So, yeah, like I say, all the hosts, all the producers were in there all day and you can connect with us that way. All right. Now, on today's show, we'll talk to Eddie Wineland, UFC Bantamweight, who got a win this past weekend over uh, Grigory Popoff. We'll talk to him about that uh, vicious KO he delivered on the prelims. And, you know, he's a former WEC champion. He's definitely put in his time in the sport. So it'll be a fun chat with him. We usually catch up with him uh, mostly every fight. We didn't get him pre-fight this time, but it'll be nice to get him post-fight. Andre Morera, a CFFC prospect. He's actually headlining C- uh, the upcoming CFFC card coming up, uh, coming up on Friday. And it'll be on the UFC Fight Pass. It's one of those quality regional shows or lower level shows sometimes they don't call themselves regional shows anymore because now now they travel so they're not just stuck in a certain region like mm-hmm. cffc was in india not too long ago and then you got someone like lfa which used to be based more like when they were legacy and uh resurrection and then they combined they were more like in the southwest uh more in the south but you know they've taken their show up to like north dakota for example so that's why sometimes i say maybe a, a lower level show lower from UFC Bantamweight. 
All right, uh, but, but but the important thing is they put in their time. The uh, CFFC is is a note is one of those noted leagues, and usually the headliners they have huge implications. Like this may be their shot, uh, their audition per se, to get into one of these big shows. So it's going to be a big fight for Andre Morera, uh, Justin Willis, UFC heavyweight, or is he a free agent? I don't know. He'll clear that up when he stops by as well. Every thirty minutes, starting in about. 25 minutes the guests will pop in so that'll leave kind of some small windows for us to cover the latest news and again take your calls let me throw out those numbers one more time 877 fight 93 or 877-344-4893 but we'll start off with that big news that i was talking about ufc 242 out in london england man it all went down it was crazy between habib Nurmagomedov, and dustin poi I, I i'm surprised no one got hurt i'm just kidding no they were real it was real peaceful they were both gentlemen and as much as it would have been fun to have a little bit of that, you know, with no one getting hurt. It wasn't. They were very respectful to each other, and that's cool. Um, we don't we don't need that for every fight. And these two are two of the more respectful uh, athletes in our sport. So good on them. Uh, it's the interim champion Poirier versus the undisputed champion Nurmagomedov. I think you just can't ask for anything better than that. With hopefully the winner fighting Tony Ferguson. But they're like they're kind of gangster in their own way. Right? They're very cordial. They'll shake your hand. And I think they mean it. They're good sportsmen. But if you ask them point blank questions, they give you pretty gangster answers. Yeah. Both of them. That's what I like about them. So I don't know if that'll ever heat up in regards to maybe a shove or anything like that. I think I don't think, I so think they're too professional for something like that. But they're definitely going to say things about each other. and uh, Respectfully, though. Respectfully, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could see that. You but know, if uh, he has his hands down, I could knock him out. If he mm-hmm. if he can't stop my takedown, I'll maul him. You know, all pretty much truths from both guys. Habib being more of a grappling-based mixed martial artist. Poirier more of a striking-based mixed martial artist. But both guys also having shored up, you know, uh, a, a lot of their holes over the years. What I like about it is that Habib and everything he says, there's a lot of people, it's not his fault, but they kind of forecast his future for him. And they ask him about the possibilities of a Conor McGregor, a Tony Ferguson. And he'll answer those questions. But I like that he always mentions Dustin Poirier's name first. Mm-hmm. He's not taking them lightly. And I like that because Dustin's dangerous, man. Well, we got some Khabib hut, uh, cuts excuse me, from the uh, press conference out in London. So you want to hit some of these topics? Let's do it. All right. So you mentioned, before we even mention Conor's and Tony's names, let's address Dustin Poirier. So let's skip to... Khabib number five and Khabib number six. Uh, this is the champion, the undisputed champion, Khabib Nurmagomedov, talking about his opponent. Dustin, I think he's experience. He have good experience, and uh, he have more than twenty fight in UFC. You know, someone beat him, and he beat someone. You know, this is experience. You know, and uh, but um, I respect him like. Uh, human like fighter you know he beat a lot of tough guys mm. uh, last fight he impressed me uh, on his boxing he have good moment and uh, you know this why is this fight is so big you know he's become interim UFC lightweight champion for reason he beat Max Holloway he beat a lot of former champions and um, but for me is everything is same you know nothing changed when the cage close, I'm gonna keep keep going, and I'm gonna keep forward. I test myself with uh, one of the best strikers in the world, you know, like Edson Barboza, Michael Johnson, Connor, like they all very good strikers. I think half half of them already finished Dustin. You know, they very good fighters. I think. What do you think? And. I already test myself, you know, I fight with a lot of good strikers and Dustin, one of them, and uh, of course I'm going to fight with him and stand up too, you know, this is not wrestling match or grappling match up, this is MMA. It better be a wrestling match on yeah. his side, like, I understand that he's improved his striking a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, but that that's nothing to mess around with, you, you go with your bread and butter, especially when you're the champion, but I will say this. Even the best wrestlers in all of mixed martial arts have eventually ran into that one fighter that they have problems taking down. And when that doesn't happen, 
it's a pretty scary moment, especially like a guy like Dustin Poya that never stops going away. He's constantly in your face. Yeah. And how about the little subtle jab when he says, I've tested myself against McGregor, uh, Michael Johnson, and Edson Barbosa, half of which have finished Dustin Poya. Mm -hmm. Actually, two-thirds. He mentioned three, and two of them did finish uh, Dustin Poye. So it, those being McGregor and Michael Johnson. McGregor was at a featherweight, and Michael Johnson was at lightweight. They were years ago, but still, he is correct. Um, and see, Habib is undefeated, man. Like, he's 27-0, and 10-0 and in the UFC. Like, there really isn't going to be much to pick apart, you know, from the Poye side. Poye's experienced five losses. But he also said something complimentary, and that's the fact that on this latest run, he has beaten three former champions. Justin Gagey, a former WSOF champ. Now they're called the PFL. Eddie Alvarez, a former Bellator and UFC champ. And, and um, Anthony Pettis, a former WEC and UFC champion. So I think he knows the opponent is formidable. But, uh, again, when you're 27-0, you, you can say a few of these things. And, you know, no one can point out who beat you because he hasn't lost. I mean, Habib, you'd have to find... I, I, on one hand, how many rounds he's either clearly lost or did you give it to him or not? You know, the 10-9, the, the close one. Mm -hmm. He's been that dominant. So now this is how he addresses uh, in Khabib number nine, cut number nine. Let's talk a little bit about how he sees maybe Connor in his future, or does he? Last three years, he have only one victory in amateur boxing, you know. How he deserves very much, you know. Like he tapped... He, he begged me, please, don't kill me, you know. And um, now he talk, now he talk about rematch. Tony Ferguson on the line, you know. Like, people who have win streak on the line, but <laughs> not the guy who, who don't win nothing last three years, you know. I have a lot of walks without him. And uh, right now I'm focused on September 7. It kind of shuts him down pretty quick. And can you really dispute what he's saying? I cannot. You can't, right? Only the organi organization can say anything. And they're just basically going to say, we're here to make money. And this makes money. His last win was a win over Eddie Alvarez. And it was in November of 2016. So he's pretty much closing on three years. The amateur boxing match that he's talking about, just for anybody that might be a little confused. And since you're not here, we're not able to put your head through a window. Maybe that'll unconfuse you. But what I'm talking about is uh, he did a charity boxing match, right, in Ireland? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if anybody's thinking that has to do with Even that had controversy. With Floyd, it did, yeah, the, <laughs> the tapping of the gloves or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the fight with versus Floyd Mayweather was a professional uh, boxing match. So he wasn't talking about that. Um, and then the, uh, the, the last MMA match was the loss to Habib Nurmagomedov. So that's why he's pretty much shutting that down now what let's see what his thoughts are on tony ferguson in khabib cut number 10 uh he pretty much anoints him as the deserving number one contender for you know for who, who should be next for that that title uh he deserved title shot my opinion but when ufc asked him to fight um, max holloway he don't take this fight and right now problem is because of him you know um, I don't know why he don't take this fight, but he take fight like regular fight with Cowboy. I know and that's and I know understand this, and um, I don't want underestimate my opponent Dustin, and uh, he is a tough challenge for me. And uh, <coughs> right now I don't want to think about other opponents. I have to focus on my opponent. All right, fair enough. But he does bring up what happened this past fall at UFC 236. It was Poye versus Holloway because Ferguson turned down the match. He actually got asked to fight both of them. He was like the A side against either one or the other two. Turned out he turned it down. He's made it clear that he just didn't want to be the interim champ champ twice because, you know, he was the interim champ before and he never lost it. They just basically, I guess, stripped him of it. And he just didn't want to go down that road. But that may have been a costly mistake because that's what could have been the solidifier for interim versus undisputed. Of course, I'm sure Tony will have uh, another side to it all. But, as you all know, Habib, well, maybe you don't. Habib has signed a new contract, and supposedly there's some 
GSP clause in there somewhere. Look, well, there's still a few more cuts to play, but right now we got to take a quick break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. We'll hit a few more of these uh, cuts from the press conference out in London for UFC 242. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Champions, Hall of Famers, Legends. The very best coverage of the fight game is right here on Sirius XM. Fight Nation, Channel 156. Perfect, guys. I was just about to touch you guys to say the... Make their show more enjoyable. It's called the mute button. Here are those two numb nuts, gorgeous George and Goes. Just underway, or after they sing the uh, national anthem here, the Boston Bruins and the St. Louis Blues are playing a decisive Game 7 for the Stanley Cup. Here are the Boston announcers on Sirius 108 XM 219, and the St. Louis announcers, they're on Sirius 119 XM 220. The national feed and 24-7 Hockey Talk is on NHL Network Radio Channel 91 and streaming on your phone and at home on SiriusXM connected devices and speakers. All right. That's not easy to do, by the way, while that guy's booming the national anthem. I should stand, right? I think that's going to be our new norm. I yeah. had to power through that one a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we'll keep talking here. I mean, we have a job to do, but we want to stand and put our, our hand over our hearts. Because it is a national anthem. We're in the uh, race and sports book here at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino. That's why oftentimes you'll hear cheering from the crowd or, or just the loud volume of whatever competition is going on. Tonight is the Game 7 of the uh, Stanley Cup Finals for hockey. Tomorrow will be Game 6 of the NBA Finals for basketball. The Raptors will be heading back to uh, Oakland to play the, uh, the G-State Warriors. Man, come on, Raptors. Who who, uh, who would be your ideal parley? The Blues and the Raptors, right? Um, or did you want the Warriors? I can't remember. Drake was starting to piss me off. Right. 
But I, I'm I'm okay with giving the Raptors. So yeah, the Raptors and the Blues. Yeah, uh, I'd want that to happen. Okay, I'm but a, it ain't right. I want the Blues because I'm just had it with Boston fans thinking they're they're it because of all the winning lately. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's not going to really hurt their legacy much. The Warriors would join an elite company, an elite group of teams known as the Lakers, the Celtics, and Bulls as the only teams to three P. I would not like the Warriors to join that group. Mm-hmm. Any, t- not any team, but it's difficult to win a, a NBA Finals. But if you do, hats off, respect. And if you go nah. back to back, wow, you guys are something else. You're pretty special. But the iconic, legendary teams, they three P. There's still a difference. There's, there's not many of those, man. You know, when you're breaking down pound for pound, you have to nitpick. Mm-hmm. Here's the difference on our three P. We called our three P. I don't remember the other teams calling theirs. The Lake Show? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they've had, uh, let me see, two times they've gone back-to-back that I remember, and and uh, they had the three-peat, of course. In fact, today I was talking to Howie from Austria, and I was congratulating him. This is the first time he's gotten to see his Liverpool Reds lift a major trophy, so that's got to be a pretty special feeling for him. Same for Buffalo Blue. Congrats to those guys. Eddie Wineland coming up, UFC uh, Bantamweight. Former WEC champion in the Bantamweight division. He'll come up in a few. Let's get back to some of these cuts. We'll jump around here a little bit. Um, so Ferguson could be next for the winner of Habib and Poirier. You heard Habib saying all the right things. I got to concentrate on Dustin. He is my foe. He's who's in front of me. But there is a little bit of a, a variable hanging out there, and that's GSP who retired earlier this year but it didn't seem like the most sacred retirement i've ever seen in my life i mean i think he was about to unretire in the middle of the same press conference you thought so well it just seemed like i didn't have that it was an obvious like negotiation i would have fought but they didn't want it but hey they know my number something like that and i'm like okay I, i mean he had a proper setting he had a press conference and everything which most fighters will just either hop on someone's show or Twitter. Post on Instagram or whatever, you know, and, and but but his was a little bit different. Anyway, here in cut number four, he addresses GSP. Let's hear what he's got to say. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know about his uh, he's gonna come back or not. But if I wanna make my legacy uh, big, if I wanna improve my legacy, I have to beat Dustin. I have to beat Tony Ferguson and GSP, and then I can become. One for one, number one fighter. And uh, this is my opinion. It sure would be nice if he did them in that order. I would like to see Ferguson fight first before GSP. If he were to fight GSP after Ferguson, and it was for a inaugural 165-pound belt, consider me in. If it was for a the 155, I'm not that crazy to see GSP compete at 155. But I guess if anyone's earned it, he is. But I'm not crazy about it. But but it doesn't mean anything. Sure it does. He'd be the first champ, champ, champ. Well, no. If Habib beats GSP at 155, I'd rather him just take on a tough challenger at 155 than GSP at 155. The dude's not fought there. Yeah. It's also he was at 185. I like, know. I mean, it's just a Or th- the inaugural 165. You could live happened. with that, right? I could live with it. But really, what he's trying to do is cement his bring legacy. In, bring in a new and wake man, he would just smash everyone if he actually beat him at 170. But it wouldn't be for a title, and I think Habib wants to rack up belts. Mm. I think. If he doesn't, then have at it. You know, fight it. Agree on a weight class, or agree on 165, even if it's not for a belt. Well, or, 165 or just, is nice. Or just go to 170, and if, it, and if Habib is not concerned with the belt, I'll see it. I'll, I'll watch that fight. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got a fighter who's undefeated. Versus, uh, arguably, the goat of the sport or someone heavily involved in that conversation. Consider me in. I don't. Do you feel like if Habib were to be GSP, that would hurt him at all? I don't know that it would hurt him that much. Who? GSP? GSP. We'd still look at him as well, one of the greats. I mean, if you're in a conversation about greatest of all time, it, it may take it may clip him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, because. The, the ones that are in that talk are either undefeated, have a loss, or two currently. 
Like Anderson Silva's out. It's John Jones, Cormier, you know, GSP, Demetrius Johnson. Soon, I guess, Cejudo will start, you know, muscling his way into that a little bit. And, frankly, I don't know who, who else, I guess, is, is in that list. But your Liddell's, Couture's, uh, Vanderlei's, BJ Penn's have slowly kind of moved out a little bit. Even Anderson Silva. Uh, maybe a little bit because they hung around too much or maybe because they really did lose key fights. Mm-hmm. You know, and hey, 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 and by the way, I, I know some of you are already, you know, getting the panties all twisted up. It doesn't mean they suck. It just means that in my opinion, they're just out of the goat talk. But it doesn't mean that they're not great or one of the greatest or greatest in their class. I'm talking about the greatest of all time. But this all is like the, the end of GSP's career. The very, very end of it. I don't know that it hurts that much. You're right. You do have to nitpick. Would be nice. Well, for example, like this. Let's say you have GSP. You're making the case for GSP, and someone's making the case for, for Habib. Right. Right now, it's a close one. The Habib guy's going, I, we've never lost. And you're saying, well, my guy defended ten times, I believe. Or no, what was it? Nine times and GSP champion. had. And two titles. So that kind of makes up for the two losses. And remember, those two losses, one was... He Part of a trilogy, him. which he won, and the other one was an avenge. He avenged the the Matt Serra fight, so GSP helps his cause there. But imagine if they fought and he lost, the Habib guy can go, yeah, but I beat you. Yeah. So that kind of edges him out a little bit of that go talk. But it doesn't mean he's not the greatest welterweight. Yeah. Unless, unless this guy. All those, ah, my God, we we're gonna yeah, go down yeah, a rabbit okay, hole yeah, that we're yeah, never gonna sorry, come sorry. out of. Um, that's what podcasts are for. <laughs> you can just go on and on and on and and uh, chat about a subject, but we're, we're not there yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All right, we got to take another break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156. Stay close. We'll be right back. We'll be talking to Eddie Wineland, a winner at UFC 238 this past Saturday.
And this is MMA Junkie Radio. All right, who's going to go first, Papa Doc or B-Rabbit? I don't know. This is that jam I think that they it were is, dropping right? lyrics to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like when they show the crowd and just everybody's kind of... <laughs> bobbing their head, waiting. And <laughs> Isn't they, that one guy that was on his phone or th- something? They buy time by going, yo, listen yeah. up. It's like this. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and then they... Because you got to put it in your mind. All right, what, what, am I, what am I about to say? Or what am I... Mm-hmm. How am I going to beat this guy? Who knows? All right. Eddie Wineland, former WEC Bantamweight champion, current UFC Bantamweight, got a big win this past Saturday uh, in Chicago, Illinois, which happens to be his, the near, very near to him. To want to call it a home game. He's in Indiana. Uh, but still, man, this was really, really big because it, it, it really got things going uh, on the undercard and... Like I say, being a local fighter who hadn't fought in a year, this this was pretty big for him. And it was really, really a nice ending sequence in round two with 13 seconds left. And Eddie Wineland joins us now on the hotline. What's up, Eddie? How you doing? What's happening, guys? I guess we'll, we'll call Chicago kind of a backyard type, huh? Pretty close, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm about an hour east. hour east of Chicago. I'm going to train on the north side of Chicago and Nile, Skokie area. Um, so I'm constantly passing through Chicago. It's it's uh, it's close enough, but I won't call it home. All right. Um, how many people <laughs> were were in attendance at your fight, by the way? Like friends and family? Uh, yeah, there, there was quite a few people. Um, you know, obviously, obviously, my wife and kids were there, and I mean, I had a handful of a handful of people. I mean, anybody anybody who was there for the early prelims, I mean, they heard I'll bet damn near everybody that was there <laughs> chanting my name. So, uh, I mean, there, there was there was a significant amount of people there in support of myself. Other firefighters too? Um, no, no, nobody from the department was there. Um, so I, I, I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, unfortunately, the fire department salary here isn't, isn't the greatest paid, so uh, lots of poor firemen can't afford UFC tickets, unfortunately. Oh, bummer! All right, well, <laughs> it was a great performance, and like I say, I think it really kicked things off. Uh, you know, I realize you weren't the first fight of the night, but uh, what, what I mean is it just kicked off a, a great night of fights. I mean, UFC 238 was stacked from top to bottom. It had a lot of ranked fighters, uh, you know, also a lot of fighters that were fighting to position themselves for title fights, the two title fights, the people's main event, former champs. You know, it had everything, and uh, I'm glad you got to be a part of it, and it was just great to see you back in action after almost a year. Yeah, you and me both. I mean, like you said, the, the Chicago card, it was it was huge. Uh, and I it, it was nice to be a part of that. It was nice to be able to fight um, close to my hometown, call it my backyard again. Um, I, I just, every time they come to Chicago, I love fighting Chicago. You know, I, I, I'm I comfortable, I'm calm, I'm stress-free. I get to sleep at home, I uh, drive to the hotel, and, and they take us over to the arena. We do, we go to work, and I go home. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask you, after your fight, there was eight, and of those eight, seven ended in a decision. Um, sure. Were you thinking about the bonus at all, or a crafty veteran like you didn't <laughs> worry about it too much? What, what were your thoughts? Um, I was. Uh, you, know, you always hope for that bonus. Um, me personally, I think I did enough for a bonus, uh, for a performance bonus. Um, I won't say my knockout was better than Shevchenko because I mean, holy shit, uh, that that knockout was insane. Um, it sure was. But as far as performance, I I think I performed well, um, but again, I'm going to be biased because it's myself. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, I was just happy to go out there and get the win and, and finally pull the trigger of which I felt like I've been shy to do in my past couple of outings. What do you attribute that to? Uh, the mustache, man. It's all the mustache. <laughs> it's the power. The power of the mustache is a great thing, man. With, with with a great mustache comes great responsibility, and when you're in that cage, your responsibility is to beat the crap out of that other man. Right. And uh, that's, that's exactly what I did. Okay. Well, I really loved the mas- the mustache, and I really loved just the whole execution of the, the build-up towards the KO. It's not like it came out of nowhere. I mean, there was some sure. great moments along the way, some good work put in by yourself. And um, maybe because... I haven't seen you fight as much lately. I always wonder when some of the veterans are coming up on a, a fight where they, they may, you know, call it a career. I know you've got a, a family now and 
you have the other career. But uh, update us on that. Like, how do you feel? Do you feel like you still have more fights in you? Do you, do you think about that? I feel amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I feel amazing. At, at 35 years, I mean, I've said it in, in every interview I've done since. At 35, I feel better than I did at 25. And it's, it's just because of my, my training. The way I train now, I train smarter instead of, instead of dragging my face in the mat every single day. When I need a rest day, I listen to my body and I take a rest day. So I'll take three training days at 100% over six at 60. I'm going to get more better. I'm going to get more efficient work out of those three days at 100%. So I'm training my body to act at 100% versus 60%. Um, I'm getting adequate rest. Um, I'm eating better food. Um, my, my previous my previous fight camps, I've I've gone the low carb. I even tried keto on my last on my last fight. I mean, you can take that and shove it because that's a bunch of crap. Um, <laughs> I, I brought a bunch of carbs. I brought a bunch of carbs back on online. Started eating more rice, more whole grains. Uh, my weight stayed lower. I had more energy. I felt amazing, and uh, I, I mean, I, I think my performance proved that. Okay. Now, I just I don't want to bring up a negative past, but I guess a little bit was the tie-in with the, the previous broken jaws and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, that, the, the kind of the wear and tear from your career, I guess that's why I was asking, do, do you consider all sure. of that when you proceed from one fight to the next? Um, not really. I mean, because that's, that's, that's water under the bridge. My jaw is good. My neck is good. My foot is good. Um, every, everything that's nagged me in the past, it's all good. Um, everything feels great. Um, and, and, I mean, when, it, when it's time to go, it's time to man up and, and, and just forget about everything else and do your work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, sign me up, man. I, I really can't wait to see you continue <laughs> to fight. You, you, you still look like you have a lot of mileage left on those tires. You know what I mean? And maybe some of it came yeah, from the fact that you only fought – once this year so far i'm sure you'll take another one but once in 2018 once in 2017 once in 2015 right. you know once in 2013 yep. so maybe there's there, there was some pros <laughs> yeah. that came with with the fact that you did step away a little bit from the limelight it's, 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 it's very possible but i'll tell you so when i feel my best is when i'm in a training camp and when i feel my worst is when i'm not in a training camp so the hardest part is getting rolling into a training camp because you get that kind of like two-week lull where it's like, wow, I, I really don't know if I can do this. And then you get over that hump, and then the last four to six weeks of training camp is just, it's butter. Everything feels great because your body's active. Everything, everything's continuing to move. Everything's on the line. Everything is in sync with itself. Um, so if I can stay moving, I, I think that's going to be big. And, I, I mean, my fighting – Fighting once a year for the past couple of years isn't by choice. Um, you know, family, life, injuries, they happen. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're beating the crap out of each other every day. So you, you're, you're going to get these small little nagging injuries. Um, some of them prohibit you from training. Some of them, it just makes it hard to train. Um, so I would like to, in a perfect world, I'd like to compete two more times this year. Okay. How soon would you like to get a call? Like... Uh, from the matchmakers, uh, you still need a, a couple weeks <laughs> off, or, or would you rather get one quickly and get it going? I wanted, I wanted to try and shoot for a uh, July thirteenth in Sacramento, but um, the wife put the kibosh on that real quick. I mean, we got we got a pretty busy June, pretty busy July. Uh, we we've got plans that we've already made, and uh, I, I already had a sit down with us like, well, a whole bunch of money, or we go through with our plans, and um, apparently the plans that we have is is more important than, than a whole bunch of money. And I, I understand because she, she puts up with a lot of my shit for, for the eight weeks that I'm training. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have to at least allot her a few weeks to, to go out and do what we had planned. And so I would like to think maybe end of September, early October, and then again maybe end December. Mm, you know what I see on the horizon? I don't know if you're a traveler. I don't know if the wife wants a vacation. But <laughs> UFC 243 is in a stadium in Sydney, Australia. So okay. I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people. A lot no, of people. I, I, go ahead. Australia is nice. Australia is nice. But I, I, I'm a states guy, man. And Sean Shelby yells at me every time. He keeps yelling at me, man. Sooner or later, you got to fight out of the country. You got to do it. Da, 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 da. Um, and sooner or later, I will. I will. I just uh, going over to Australia and those big time zone swings. Uh, boy, that'd be a tough one. Uh, not saying I wouldn't do it. It'd be awesome to go to Australia, 
But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, you don't want to go to Mexico City because that's 10,000 feet yeah. altitude. Uh, Copenhagen, sure. Denmark, there goes the travel thing again. So <laughs> it, it seems like the UFC is doing a lot of international. Check this out. Yeah. China, United Arab Emirates, okay. that's the Abu Dhabi card. Vancouver, Canada, yeah, yeah. maybe that's not the end of the world, just crossing over. Mexico that's City, that's Copenhagen, terrible. Denmark, <laughs> Sydney, Australia. There's a lot of those international ones getting on, so you might want to get on that Anaheim card in mid-August or, or, or renew that passport. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, well, hey, you got to do what you got to do sometimes, right? Yeah. This is Eddie Wineland. We're talking to folks. He got a big win this past Saturday at UFC 238 over Gregory Popoff, second round KO, a thing of beauty. All right, goes. What do you have for Eddie Wineland? Eddie, I was thinking about something you were saying. You were talking about all the different changes that you've done throughout your career, whether they were diet or training. And the training one really hit home in the sense that what yeah. you said made a lot of sense. But I thought about what a nightmare it must be for yourself or for other fighters because you did a lot of things that you said made you feel good for this fight. But sometimes, yeah. say the fight just didn't go your way, how do you reassess what you did? Because there's times where you can do all the right stuff but it just doesn't work out. Um, do you think fighters sometimes feel like a loss almost forces you to have to change those things? Like, would you would you have been able to give all the, the stuff that you did in this camp another try again and, and just run it back again? You know, yes, because the way that I felt in this camp, I felt different than I did in most of my other camps. I think the last time I felt this good in a training camp was when I fought Scott Jorgensen. Um, so... If, if, if things wouldn't have went my way on Saturday, it, it would have just been attributed to he was the better man that night. Um, I felt great. My training felt great. My cardio felt great. My strength felt great. Um, everything felt like it was sharp and on point. Uh, my mindset was right. Physically, I was right. So I knew that, that stepping into that octagon on Saturday was the best version of Eddie Wineland up until June 8th. So... Now we continue to do the same thing that we did for this last camp and, and create, a, again, yet another better version of myself. I hope this isn't too personal, but you brought it up and it kind of got me thinking. But when you have that conversation with the wife and you say, all right, this is what I would like to do, kind of knowing that you're going to get yeah. shot down, is it the equivalent <laughs> of like us when we're trying to convince our wives to let us go, go to Vegas? Like, What's your game plan going into a conversation like that? <laughs> um, I'll tell you, I, I've been blessed. My, my wife, she just she goes with the flow of things. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, if I if I told her, hey, I'm fighting, I'm gonna try and get on July card, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, eh, she'd be she'd probably be irritated, but she would go with it. Um, and and hence why I didn't fight her on it. Uh, she puts up with so much of my crap, and and I understand that um, sometimes I'm hard to deal with. So, I, I, I just I gotta give in sometimes. Sometimes I got I gotta give in and I gotta let her I gotta let her uh, do what we had planned and, and do the whole family thing and, and uh, just do what we gotta do. Can I give you a tip? <laughs> uh oh, I'm listening. I'm listening. All right, when you go into an argument and you know that it's not looking good, like you're probably gonna lose, come in with something okay. ridiculous on top of it. So say you want to have a talk <laughs> about your next fight and this 80-inch uh, 4K TV that you saw. That way when she shoots you down on the <laughs> yeah, fight, you go, well, $5, yeah, you go, well, can we go one and one at least? You know, what about that TV? And then she'll feel bad and she'll go, all right, get your TV. But you know what? We're sticking to this. <laughs> Always come in with something <laughs> ridiculous. Well, uh, fortunately for her, I'm not a big TV watcher. So uh, um, we probably won't be buying any 80-inch 4Ks. We... <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, but I, I constantly outside. Um, I, I'm 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 a country boy at heart. Um, you know, we we got three and a half acres in the middle of Northwest Indiana. I have one neighbor, and the rest of me is surrounded by cornfields. So um, my boys are constantly running around the running around the yard naked, uh, doing what they want, shooting guns, riding four wheelers. Uh, that, that's just that's me. I'm not a, I'm not a an iPad TV person. Uh, I'm a busybody. So whether it be whether it be building something, training, working on my car, constantly, constantly doing something, uh, moving around. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, he brought up Jorgensen. 
And yeah. wasn't it after that fight that we had him on and he said that's how a corn-fed hillbilly gets down or something mm -hmm. like yeah. that? <laughs> I remember that. that. One of the most I, epic almost, quotes almost ever. Verbatim. That was you, right, Eddie? Almost yeah. Verbatim. That was myself, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. how a corn-fed hey, hillbilly that, gets it. down. I mean, it, 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 it's still a fact. I mean, it's still a fact. It, it's, uh, it's still there. I've still got it. I'm still a corn-fed hillbilly. <laughs> and um, I, I, I won't change. You know, that's just that's that's what I like to do. That's that's what I do for fun, and that, that's me. And uh, uh, nobody's gonna tell me otherwise. I like it. What about all of the backlash on corn itself these last few years? I mean, is that is it, you said uh, something about the corn fields? And, and do, do you have like a farm per se, or, or I, no, surrounded I, I don't by have that? a farm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just surrounded surrounded by farm fields. So so on the on the south side, the west side. And the north side of me, or south, southeast and north side of me, is all cornfield. And then about 50 yards to the west of me, I have one neighbor again, who's he's a hillbilly. He's into he's into cars, he's into guns, he's into all the loud shit. So we get along great. Um, I actually went to high school with him. Didn't know that until I moved in. Um, so we, we get along great, and uh, everybody just kind of leaves us alone. All right, sounds like a good life, man. Uh, <laughs> it is, it, you know, it really is. So if I want, if I want to go and blow through a couple of magazines at NK, I go and do it. Gotcha. All right. Well, listen, man, it's great catching up with you. I know you're at work, so thanks for you know stepping out for a second to talk to us. But congrats on that Absolutely. win. That was really solid. It Thank was great you. to see you back in action. And I'm sure when the next fight breaks, maybe we can have you on to to preview the upcoming fight. So thanks as always, always for your time. Always a pleasure. Enjoy talking to you guys. Okay. See you, Eddie. Take care. All right, folks, that's Eddie Wineland. You can follow him on Twitter, at Eddie Wineland. Eddie's also a full-time firefighter uh, in Indiana, so he was actually working tonight, and he stepped, stepped out for a minute. He actually let us know that if, you know, if he got a call, he'd have to bounce, but uh, looks like things are quiet out there, so that's great. That cheer that you guys heard was what? goes The a Blues. Goal? Blues just scored. They scored, huh? Yeah. So the Blues, the St. Louis Blues, are up one nothing goes? Mm-hmm. In Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. All right. Good enough. All right, folks. We're going to take uh, our last break here. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156. When we come back, we're going to do our daily debate.
Here's Garcia seemingly can't agree on anything. Everybody knows it's duck season. Rabbit season. Duck season. Rabbit season. Whether it's food. Less filling. Tastes great. Less filling. Tastes great. Gambling. Always bet on black. I like red. Black. Red. Black. Red. Black, dummy. Or even social media. Instagram. Snapchat. Instagram. Snapchat. The same applies to the biggest stories in MMA. Time for MMA Junkie Radio's Daily Debate. Today's hashtag daily debate for at MMA Junkie Radio. Who would you rather see reach the at Bellator MMA welterweight Grand Prix final versus Douglas Lima? Roy McDonald or Neiman Gracie? So just to set things up, this Friday is Bellator 222 out in New York City. And the other semifinal featuring McDonald and Gracie, which is also a title defense for McDonald. This the, the 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 winner here faces Douglas Lima. This is the Grand Prix that started last year. It's also the Grand Prix where the winner gets one million dollars, courtesy of Fifty Cent. So high stakes here at Bellator 222. But goes the question. All right, I'm going with Neiman Gracie. I'm going with him because I think it'll be fun that we finally see that wrinkle in Bellator tournaments where a champion can actually lose their belt halfway through a tournament. I think it'll be fun for that. And then isn't the sport a lot more fun when a Gracie's on top? And I think for Bellator, that would be good. You know, Neiman Gracie is really making waves. I think he's a, he's a exciting fighter. I'd rather see that go down. What if Lima wins? Now we have a possible trilogy. Also good for Bellator. And the first fight didn't suck. I have a feeling their paths will cross anyway. They're two of the best guys. They'll, they'll run into each other eventually again, I think. Um, but Neiman Gracie is, is, is just going to make that exciting, make the Does he become exciting. a star, though? Like McDonald's Hell expense? yeah, Because McDonald's a star, and Bellator needs stars. Uh, yeah, but McDonald's always tough. Like I, I think he could suffer a loss and be right back in it and be, and be exciting again. And uh, Neiman Gracie, though, anytime you can attach that Gracie name, especially in a tournament, you know what that does for Bellator? That'd be dope. Hmm. Think about it. And which fight? They bring back tournaments. Right. And they have a Gracie in the final. Come on. How how could how could you not watch that? It sells itself. I'm going to use your own argument against you, though, that you often use. There's two ballrooms, and one of them says Douglas Lima versus Roy McDonald. The other one says Douglas Lima versus Neiman Gracie. I know it sounds ridiculous because how is Lima going to fight in both? But mm-hmm. my point is you don't know who he's going to, you know, let's just say you don't know who he's going to fight or what, but go along here with me. Mm-hmm. Which fight is just more captivating, though, athletically? I think it's going to be... <sighs> I mean, yeah. I get where you're going. Gra- Gracie's nice, but, man, those are two awesome forces. I roll the dice, though, because cause I've already seen one. Okay. Right? So I roll the dice, and I go, well, let's see what this Gracie kid's got. Okay. I, I like your answers. Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty much on the same side. Uh, I... I Neither yeah, that, one's going to be bad. That would be pretty cool. And this is a Gracie that's put in his time, and uh, he deserves this spot. So if, if he can be the one to beat uh, Roy McDonald and face Douglas Lima, that'd be huge. And that's not an easy road, man, also, Ed Ruth. Mm-hmm. That's why you got to tune in on Friday for Bellator 222. This is the main event, folks. Uh, Roy McDonald versus Neiman Gracie. The winner continues in the Grand Prix for the Grand Prix belt. One million dollars, and of course, one of them will be walking in with the title to defend against Douglas Lima. So a lot at stake here at Bellator 222. Thank you to those of you that voted. The way it broke down goes was almost like a three to one in favor of Roy McDonald. I'm not so sure that the that they put the thought into it. They weren't thinking. what we covered. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. We are going to be coming up on a top of the hour break, but let me just fill you guys in. You heard another roar. And it's St. Louis up 2 nothing on the Boston Bruins. Goes, what is going down here? Boston's at home. Boston's the city that just doesn't lose, especially as of late. How did this happen? Were they pretty clean glo- goals? Have you been able to sneak a peek at, the, uh, at least the replays? You know, the first one, there were there were a lot of passes that led up to it. I mean, anytime you can pass the puck around like that, it's, it's a nightmare for a goalie, especially with everybody in front of them like that. And it was a slap shot. The second one, I didn't really see too well. Actually, I think they're showing it right now. But uh, but the Blues goalie's been on fire, man. And it's not like he hasn't been shot at. He's just been on fire. I just saw the last one right through La Guacha, like they say in Spanish, right between his legs. Did mm-hmm. you see that? Wow. All right, 2 nothing for the St. Louis Blues. And it just so happens that period one is over. 
So the Boston Bruins have 40 minutes, two periods of 20 minutes apiece to come back from that deficit. But they are at home, and they're pretty, pretty good team. I was telling goes earlier that when Boston wins, they seem to win convincingly, whereas when St. Louis was winning, they were either needing an OT or – it was just a nail-biter of a game. And so I think St. Louis has at least set themselves up properly. If they were down 2 nothing, I would predict that Boston would win 5 nothing. Mm -hmm. Instead, I think we're going to be treated to a pretty good uh, ending here. All right, folks. So we're coming up here against uh, the top of the hour. When we come back, we're going to have uh, another guest of ours uh, join us. We just hung up the phone with Eddie Wineland. And we're now we're going to be talking to Andre uh, Morera, excuse me, Bar uh, Barquero, they call him. Age 23, 5-1 overall, and he is going to be fighting at CFFC. That's coming up here. Uh, it's CFFC 76 that's coming up here also on Friday in Pennsylvania. So we'll talk to him about that. He'll be fighting UFC veteran Sean Santella. We'll be right back. It's the MMA Junkie Radio Show on Fight Nation, Channel 156. Mantles are covered with participation awards. They have boxes of gold stars that they purchase themselves. They are the legends and demand your respect. Here are George and Goes. I know I'm not supposed to do a read here because we're just starting off, but I think this is an important game, man. This is the last game of the NHL hockey season, so I'm just going to read you the info, not necessarily do a, a standard read. But for you hockey fans, if you don't realize it, today is Game 7. Between the Boston Bruins and the St. Louis Blues, the game went off uh, about a half an hour ago, and it's two nothing St. Louis. But if you're in, uh, if you're listening or you want to hear and catch some of that, the Boston announcers are on Sirius 108 XM 219. The St. Louis announcers are on Sirius 119 XM 220, and the NHL Network Radio Channel is 91. If you ever want to check it out throughout the day, for uh, all the best coverage in hockey. All right. I really always enjoy talking to Eddie Wineland. He was very fun, fun to talk guy. to. Yeah, And we'll be talking to Justin Willis uh, in a little bit as well. Andre Marrero will join us shortly. Um, forecasting to the future. Uh, Alexa Grasso goes will be on Friday show. Nice. And Chris Curtis of the PFL will visit the studio. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, he'll, he'll come by. Remember, we had a fun chat with him Yeah. before um, his last fight. Alexa Grosso's been in studio before, right? Yes, but Didn't when she was with Invicta, I believe. Shannon Knapp brought her, right? Correct. Okay. You know the other day I was going through photos and I found it and I could not remember how that had happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot she had been in here. Yeah. Uh, very pleasant young lady. Speaks great English. She's from Mexico and she comes from a boxing family. And I'm telling you, man, as fun as it is to watch her just fight, just... Watching her warm up or her throw pads is very impressive. You just see those quick hands and then that left that comes in and digs to the body, you know, like when she's doing the pad work. It's, it's really, really a thing of beauty. She is one of the best at pad work. Yes. Throw the men in there. I don't care. She is awesome. Yeah. She. I mean, she's got some skills. And if you were to see her on the street, you would just – you would think that – Oh, is this young lady on her lunch? Is she on her way back to the to the library, you know, or something? She she doesn't look like in any way menacing or imposing, like 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 
an athlete of, of any sort. She just has like a, a wholesome look to her. Mm -hmm. But man, she really, really is uh, physically gifted and and like I say, she's got great, great hands. And I, I think her kind of slowing down the pace of how many fights she was taking and just allowing herself to get better allowed her to put on the performance that she did when she beat former title contender Karolina Kovalkiewicz. I think they were pushing her a little too fast in the beginning. I think she did need that Could break. Could be. To kinda her, Yair, like they were looking for, you know, UFC was big on Mexico about three to five years ago. And... So anybody that could speak Spanish or what? Is your mom from Mexico but your dad's from Cuba? Get in there. Say you're Mexican. Mm -hmm. Speak Spanish. Say this. Say that. You know, and, and so Kane and Gastelum and a few others, Ricardo Lamas. Gilbert. You know, yeah. They're, they're going in there and, and, and doing their thing. And, and, um, and so I think a few of them got, you know, like a little bit of the rush job. All right. Speaking of Latin America, we'll talk to Andre Moreira from Costa Rica, Central America. Uh, he's 23 years of age. Barcaro, they call him. 5-1 and one overall. Four finishes of those five wins. He's going to be fighting Sean Santella at CFFC 76 on Friday. You can catch the fights on the UFC Fight Pass. And Andre joins us now on the hotline. By the way, this is the headliner about if I didn't mention it. Well, hello, Andre. How are you doing, man? Welcome to MMA Junkie Radio. Hey, how are you, how are you guys? I'm pretty excited to be with you guys. Well, thank you. Doing pretty good. How are you guys? Thank you. We're doing well, man. Thank you very much for asking. We're excited to have you on as well. Um, like I say, like I told the audience, CFFC, LFA, you know, CES, these have been launching pads for a lot of the uh, athletes that are now uh, at the top over at UFC, Bellator. You know, they're doing very well. And especially when they're in the main event, it means something. It means that yeah, you're on the cusp of maybe taking that next step. So, uh, I'm I'm happy for you that you're in this position. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy too. I'm excited. I mean, it's a great opportunity. I'm fighting a guy that's been around for a long time. Everybody knows him around the state. Most of your uh, you fight at 125 or 135, you, you you have heard his name a long time ago. So I've been watching him for a long time, more than he thinks I've been watching him. Uh huh. Uh, so I'm excited that this fight is now go going to happen Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we're really, really looking forward to it. And I wanted to ask you, Andre, your record is really fascinating to just, you know, uh, examine. What I'm getting at is, as an amateur fighter, you went undefeated. You had the seven fights that I, that I see here. Uh, you had some stoppages. I go ahead. Yeah. I got nine as an amateur. Nine and zero, and as a pro, six and one. Because I think Sherdog, uh, some of the fights they haven't uploaded. I don't know if Sherdog is still using it. Okay. But yeah. So the so you had the nine <laughs> and no amateur run. Then you turned pro and yeah. you lost your first fight. Uh, and then yeah. you peeled yeah. off another win streak. And I wanted to ask you, uh, just. I, I know I know I mean you have a ton of wins, but I just want to focus on the one loss. Was it demoralizing for you that you turned pro after such a great amateur career? Uh, and did it bring you down and how were you able to get over it and then start that new streak you're on right now? Well, it was an interesting story because of course I came I came as a nine and amateur to, to pro. I moved up to one thirty five for my pro debut and yeah, I lost to to a decision that I thought I had. And at the beginning for me, it was just taken the bad way. I think I was taking it the bad way, just saying, that yeah, the judges screw me, I should be winning this and that. But then I took the, the bright side of it, and it was, uh, I wasn't finished my last amateur fight. I needed more finish, I needed to be more excited, I needed to be more precise with my opponent. So I started finishing my opponents, and I took it the bright side, I look at, I go back, I got really depressed after a loss, and then I went back to 135, and I, 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 I got this streak, and now I'm getting this shot. So now I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know if you know this or, now, or, or not, but there's two athletes that I can remember that had a similar journey. One of them made it to 32-1 and one and was a world champion. His name was Henan Burrell. He lost mm -hmm. his first fight, and then he won the next 31. <laughs> <laughs> or 32. Uh, so th yeah. That's incredible, you know. And then Chris Cyborg lost her first fight, and she won her next 20. So you didn't, you did not get down on yourself. You've now won six in a row.
but maybe you can join uh, these two. Uh, fine company there, two UFC world champions at one point in their careers. Yeah, hopefully I, ca I can do that. That's what I'm aiming for. I mean, after I lost my first fight, I was like kind of a 20s. Like beginning my 20s, so you, you, you get some uh, crisis, let's say, right? So I was thinking about if I should continue fighting or I should go back to school. I finished school and now I'm all dedicated to fighting. Uh, but now I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to stay. I'm here to win. I'm here to, to, to make the next step and, and then hopefully get that UFC shot, that UFC call. Andre Morera, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. He'll be fighting on Friday, headlining CFFC 76 versus Sean Santella. You can watch the fights on the UFC Fight Pass. All right, goes. what do you have for Andre Morera? Andre, that last fight that you had, it went to a decision, but that's very rare in your career because you're, you're kind of a finishing machine. Can you explain uh, yeah. if that was just that, that, that night, the, the opponent, what changed for you? Well, I fought Tommy Espinosa in my last fight. I think he's one of the top 125 prospects. He's a really big 125er. I just, I, I couldn't get it that night. I tried it, I got into the back, like, I, I was in the back position for, like, 12 minutes of the fight. I did have a bad calf infection on me, so that might affect, but I, I don't put that because I, 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 could, I, could get, I could get the job done. Of course, you, you want to finish all your fights. That's that's what gets you to the big show. But I mean, now I'm I'm, I'm excited that Friday night I'm gonna put another finish into my record and uh, just continue climbing into into the next step. For people who haven't experienced that before, we we've heard fighters before fighting with a staph infection and what it can kind of do to to drain your body a little bit. Can you explain that whole process of what it actually feels like before the fight? You know, having to do the weight cut and then actual fight yeah so you're cutting weight so your immune system is going to be possibly low defense right so you will be uh susceptible to all these bacteria and viruses that, that is going to be around you uh for me it was uh my staff like got bad the day of the fight like i was like doing like this morning workout before the fight and it opened up it was a lot of like things coming out of my knee and I just like tried to carry on, didn't think about it. I felt I felt like I felt like tired, but I, I didn't think about it. I just carry on and, and my coach Daniel and my coach uh, from Costa Rica they just told me like look we we gotta fight through it. I just bought some liquid bandage that they sell at C V S and uh, and go to fight and uh, and then the next day I will take antibiotics. What's the scene like in Costa Rica for mixed martial arts? I know Actually, George, you went down to Costa Rica one time for like a reality show, right? And that was a while ago. 2008. It Has was, it picked up? It was called El <laughs> Something Peleador. Gran Peleador? Something. El Gran Peleador, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My coach, Ariel, uh, actually was in there and he's now with me here in Philly. Uh, well, Costa Rica is, I think, uh, not this spell to Mexico, but I think it's, it's the, it has the highest level in MMA right now. Ooh, uh, we, okay. You don't hear us a lot because we don't have that a lot of support from the social social media and the networks in Costa Rica. But a lot of fighters from Costa Rica they go to these Mexican like big companies, Luke and Combat America, so they do good good fights. And we beat Mexicans, Mexican beat us sometimes. But we're in the mix in there. Uh, I think Costa Rica, Mexico, and Peru are the best uh, places right now to. Uh, to be fighting in Central America and Latin America if you, if you want to evolve. Uh, but our in Costa Rica is getting big. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is getting big. In my gym where I train out in Costa Rica, we got 10 black belts from Hansel Gracie. So, so we got a lot of experience. All my coaches have been traveling to the States for the past 10 years. So, so we got a good level. Uh, uh, that's what happened with my last opponent. He thought because I was with from Costa Rica I wouldn't have that good level and, and he got uh, you, you can never pass somebody because of their nationality their ethnicity or whatever they're, they're fighters and they know what they're doing right hmm interesting yeah thanks for the update on Costa Rica um I, I, he's yeah. right. A lot of fighters have been seeing coming out of Peru, and Peru has a couple organizations that consistently throw on shows. Yeah, uh, Mexico is getting a UFC PI. Apparently, they're going to be breaking ground pretty soon there. 
Um, wow. And I, I, I would imagine that soon Argentina, they've produced good athletes, Co Colombia as well. So it is really going to be interesting to watch Central and South America well, produce stars in the future. For me, the interesting stuff is uh, letting, letting people, uh, they're fighters, right? We, we come from the Aztecs, the Mayans, all these uh, Indians that they used to fight for their life, right? And uh, you see it in boxing. It's just the MMA is such a new sport that it, it's just taking us time to catch up. But when we catch up, I think the Mexicans and the Latin, the Latin fighters are going to take over the sport as they do in boxing and all these other sports. So... It's in our blood. We fight. So if you're fighting a Latin guy, a, a Latino, you know it's going to be a tough fight. It's not going to be an easy fight. It's going to be a scrappy. It's going to be, they're not going to give up easy. They're going to go hard. Pura vida, my man. Uh, hell yeah. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe you. Cuba is another one. Mm -hmm. uh, Dominican Republic. Yeah, I mean, they're, Cuba, yeah. the, the, they're going to have some you know, great athletes that, that, are, that can be converted. But we're still talking about five, ten years down the road. Right now, let's focus on Andre Morera, who's going to be fighting Sean Santella at CFFC 76. Uh, Andre, do you do predictions? Who, 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 uh, when is this fight going to end? Do you, do you already envision it? Uh, I envision a lot. Like you, Usually, you envision yourself winning this way, winning the other way. But either way, I'm, I'm, I'm there to win. I think I'm going to stop him on the ground. It's going to be either a TKO or a submission. Uh, I just think uh, I'm young, I'm hungry, and I, and, I, and I want to make my name. And this is, this is for my country, this is for my family, this is for my team. And I just can't wait. Can't wait for Friday night. I'm, I'm excited. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish Sean Santella. Hey, by uh, the way, 100%. Andre, did you hear the latest news, too? Dana White has said the UFC is not getting rid of the flyweight division. So I know that you're focused on yeah, Santella, but, but still, I think that's a great message for all the flyweights all across the world, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was a great news. I just, I just saw that. Uh, well, I was really impressed with Henry. Uh, he, came, he, came, uh, he kept his composure. He came back against a very good fighter in Maro Moraes. So I guess we deserve that. Uh, I, was a, I was a little bit upset because Brandon Moreno got released from the UFC and he was saying there was, that the UFC told him they were going to take up the division. And I just I my contract like two days to, to before to fight on sale. I was like, damn, I got to cut weight. I will have been fighting at 35 they, if I need the UFC taking the 135 pound division. But now they, they got it back. I'm excited. And, and uh, hopefully after this fight, I'm there. I'm there in the roster. And then and, uh, just let, it, let him know Harry Cejudo, he's next. <laughs> hopefully he's next. All right. All right. Hey, no, no problem. No problem with that call out. Um, and this is important, by the way, what I'm saying, because... Only one championship, and the UFC feature the flyweights. You know, PFL has their six divisions, and one of them is not flyweight. In fact, they don't even feature featherweight. And then Bellator has yet to adopt flyweight. So that, that's how important it was for the UFC to have that because you didn't want just one organization to have them. I think it's always great to have the competition and the options. Uh, and I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the major uh, leagues. Uh, obviously, there's... Tons of promotions worldwide, and, and many of them do feature the flyweight division. But I'm talking about, I guess, the next step up. So, anyway, Andre, listen, I know it's the, tonight's the night you're going to make your weight cut. So we appreciate the time you gave us. I hope you have a great weight cut, safe weight cut for tomorrow. And, of course, we can't wait to see you fight on Friday versus Sean Tantella in the main event at CFFC 76. So thank you very much, sir, for your time tonight. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, and thanks for the good vibes. I appreciate that. I embrace that. Thank you very much for having me. Hopefully, you enjoyed the fight. It's going to be a good fight, and uh, it's going to be a good wake-up, too. Hopefully, it's going very well. It's going to be... Uh, I'm, I'm, I just can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait on Friday night. Thank you again for having me, and uh, thank you. Thanks for the good vibes and everything. Pura vida. Pura vida. All right. Take care, Andre. All right. We'll see you. All right, folks, you can follow uh, our two guests on Twitter. We had Eddie Wineland, at Eddie Wineland. I think I may have said that one already. And Andre can be followed at A Barquero MMA. So that's A B A R Q U E R O M M A. Follow him on Twitter. That's our guest now. You can let them both know. You heard them on the at MMA Junkie Radio Show. And with that, we're going to go to a break. 
It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, channel 156. Stay close. by aliens and instantly returned for raiding all their snacks. They are Gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Junkie Radio. The Action Network can now be heard on Fantasy Sports Radio weekday mornings at 9 Eastern. Dominate your fantasy sports leagues and beat the books by listening to Black Jack Fletcher, four-time big league all-star Paul LaDuca, and the Action Network team of analysts. Fantasy Sports Radio on Series 210 XM87 and streaming on your phone and at home on Series XM connected devices and speakers. Quick update on the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, Game 7. The St. Louis Blues are up 2-0 over the Boston Bruins with 15 minutes left in the second period. So why did we play uh, that, that, that post-fight um, spe- speech, I guess, by Henry Cejudo? Mm-hmm. Because he makes a reference there about the being a pound-for-pound king, greatest combat sports athlete. Now, on today's show, we're not going to have enough time to really, really spread our papers out our notes and lay out the facts but what i want to do is i want to set the table what i want to set the table for goes is a day where we have like a, a good panel a monday or friday where when dan tom's here when you're here when i'm here when the other seat is occupied by a coach or a fighter or another one of the the junkies whatever doesn't matter and we can have a good 30 minute discussion on that exact claim 
Because that's a tough one. All right. But what I want to say, at least, at least get out today is Henry Cejudo, we just did the most recent rankings, and I moved him up to number four. Four? Yeah. So he's not even the top pound for pound athlete yet. Henry, slow down, man. You, you just beat Demetrius and TJ and Marlon, but. It's huge, though. I know, but he's not the only one to do that. Like, DC also did that. And DC's got like a lot of a lot more skins, you know. No, no, no. Pound for pound, I'm just talking about MMA oh, pound for pound. Okay. All right. And John Jones has title defenses, and Habib's never lost. So there's a lot of things just in our sport alone that he has to slowly get to. Do I hate him though for throwing it out? No, because I'm talking about it. You're gonna talk about it. People have talked about it. So nothing wrong with setting the table, and he's inching closer to something like that. What he's done is simply amazing. That's just pound-for-pound pound MMA talk. Now, greatest combat sports athlete talk. Well, one big thing we have to start with is, and I'd love to hear from you guys on Twitter. If you don't want to call in, that's fine. Because, frankly, we got Justin Willis coming up shortly anyway. Uh, at MMA on SiriusXM, at MMA Junkie George, at The Goes, at MMA Junkie Radio. You can hit us up. Combat sports athlete, my point-blank question to you goes is, do you include pro wrestlers? That is a tough, tough question. The outcome is predetermined. No, but they are still competing, trying to hurt each other, but not with the the viciousness and malice or whatever bad intentions of what you see in boxing and MMA and some of the other right. ones, right? Mm -hmm. I know in karate, there's like some certain point scoring that that's done as well, but still, you have to have some incre You have to be an incredible athlete. And you have to be mentally tough and physically tough. And there is a stepladder along the way. And to become a world champion in pro wrestling is still a great accolade. You know, you still have to tip your hat to all those that have ever done it and all those that ever will. It's not easy for the promoter to finally say, tonight's the night. You know, we're, we're giving you uh, the strap. And that's why a lot of those athletes collapse and cry. Those are real tears, man when they go in and, and do that type of accomplishment. Um, so, again, look, if you look up the word combat sports, you're mostly, whatever, wherever you go for that, you're usually not going to find pro wrestling part of that group. But if you see the word combat just defined, then there are a little bit of the uh, intangibles of, of that definition that, that can apply to that. Yeah. So why I say that, because if we were to have an extended conversation tonight, a lot of people would say, well, look what Brock Lesnar did. And let's look at what Brock Lesnar did. I'll say it real quick. He's an NC2A Division One wrestling champion. He's a pro wrestling champion to the highest level. And he became a UFC heavyweight champion. Now, again, do we call it three different sports? Or do we call it just what he did in wrestling and only what he did in MMA? I think that's what you have to do. Ronda Rousey, a bronze medalist in judoka, a UFC world champion, and a WWE champion. Holly Holm, a boxing champion, a kickboxing champion. I'm not sure if her accolades were like on the world stage level, but a UFC champion. Alistair Overeem, a former dream champion, a former strike That's force important. champion. And he crossed over to kickboxing and won a world K1 max, mm -hmm. which is the night of all nights in Japan against uh, eight other great kickboxers, and he took one of those down. That's, that's, that commands that's respect elite as well. The elite. So uh, Dan Henderson, a U.S. A US Olympian, not a, a, not a medalist, but a, an Olympian. However, a world champion at Strikeforce, a two-division champion in Pride, when Pride was right there with the UFC. We can, that's a whole other argument. Well, were they one? A UFC one. I don't care. He beat quality opponents there as well uh, and this is a d oh he also won the rings tournament and he also um, beat like big dudes he beat Fedor Emelianenko for crying out loud so anyway um, there's, there's a lot of these athletes you know what I mean and that's why I say that's something that we're not going to be able to cover here I heard on another show may have been M MMA tonight and the guys are saying Alexander Carolyn he won 13 world titles and wrestling and Olympics he won I think four or some shit like that cool but this isn't the greatest wrestler of all time conversation 
it's the greatest combat sport. So my question would be, did he kickbox? Did he box? Did he fight MMA? No. Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. So as much as that would get him somewhere, I still believe at least two sports you need to have competed in at high levels to be involved in that conversation. Now, that's why Henry Cejudo is in that conversation. you got to take pro wrestling out, though, I think. You think so? Yeah, because we're talking combat athlete, and all I can think of is the athlete part, but the combat part, it just, uh, granted, they do do some sort of combat, but it's pre-scripted. You can take a lot of those pro wrestlers, which... The ending is, but, but the physicality isn't. Yeah, but, I mean, hats off for that, but our last guest has got seven pro fights, I think. He could probably mop the floor with some of those guys, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So in a real fight. In a real fight, yeah. yeah. So I don't know that we can really bridge that gap in that way. Mm-hmm. Well, but Kurt Angle wrestled uh, for the Olympics and got us a gold medal. And That's then he the came. impressive part, yeah. And then he got... I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like part of me wants to definitely include them because I still feel like I witnessed feats of athleticism in pro wrestling um, that sometimes even wow me more than what I may see, like... I'm just picking one, like a Taekwondo or, you know, tournament or whatever, like the highest really? level of Taekwondo or the highest level of, yeah, I mean, I, I don't yeah. think it's easy to become a a pro wrestling champion. Yeah, I'm sure there's been the, the it ain't, but Vince you get McMahon told when you're the one. champion. I know, I know, I get there. Um, I, I get that. I, I get all that. Um, I'm not trying to disrespect pro wrestling. I'm just saying when we're talking about, like, who the biggest badasses on the planet are, you gotta, you gotta go real life. Maybe we'll have to, we'll have to continue this discussion. But we laid some groundwork. We got to go to a commercial though. Big Pretty is on deck. Justin Willis, you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. Stay close. We'll be right back.
Good, you're still here. The boys were just getting warmed up. Now the real show begins. Take it away, boys. Our next guest, Justin Willis. You can follow him on Twitter at Big Pretty MMA. Justin is four and one in the UFC, and uh, he's looking to fight sometime this summer. So it's been a while since we caught up with him. Let's get him on the hotline. What's up, Big Pretty? How you doing? What it do? Nah, man, we're doing great. Great to have you on, my man. How you doing? I'm great, man. Cool. All right. Uh, wanted to first start off by saying, really, really tip my hat watching you on uh, Instagram shedding, what, like 20, 25 pounds? That, that's, that's great, Justin. I mean, seriously, just that alone, I was telling Goes during the commercial, for one, whenever your next camp starts, if it hasn't already, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you're going to be feeling a lot better there. <laughs> you, you won't have the hey, fight hey, week. Don't, don't, hey, bro, hey, listen, listen. hey, man, listen, man. I'm telling you one thing. Yep. That was the missing link. That's it, that's all. Right? I mean, the next big pretty y'all see is going to be magnificent. Whoever is on the other side of me is going to get fucked up. Point blank, <laughs> period. <laughs> well, what I was going to say was the other thing is there won't be the fight week drama of the weight cut. And then, of course, you, you know, you're going to be faster, Nitty. leaner, leaner and, and, you know, a lot quicker. So Nitty. I'm a fucking lightning bolt. Cool. All right. Um, how, what are you down to? Are you, you like a 260, I think, last I heard? Man, I, I, can't, I can't say all that right now. We got to keep that under wraps because um, this could be, you know, my target weight. No, nah, fuck it. I'll say it. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you never kept no secret. Exactly. All right, so, uh, the right now I'm about 263. Okay. And I float right now about 263, 264. Um, you know, after a workout or so, I'm about 260. You know how that goes. Yep. Uh, but the goal, the goal is, the goal is about two fifty five. Nice. But, you know, I think that I'm talking about. I'm talking about walking around normal weight. You know, no, no sweat, no nothing. Just that's me. And your pass was two eighty, two eighty five. So that's like thirty pounds off of your frame. How you feeling, my man? Uh, the back. Every, oh every, everybody's better, every part of your body's thinking you right. Better, I'm quicker. I'm more reactive. My athleticism was already phenomenal. Now it's astronomical. Love it. All right, so Big Pretty, um, you know, some stuff went down at the end of May. It's been about two weeks, three weeks or so. Give us uh -huh. an update. Let's start off uh -huh. with just a basic question. Are you still with the UFC? Or have you cleared your, you know, all that up? Hey, I, I'll, say, I'll say it like this, man, because uh, that's between the UFC. we have to come out and say all that stuff. Uh, but I'll say it like this. If Tyson Tavesa don't fight me, cut him. And, I don't, like, and, and, I, and the thing is, is I... I hope and I pray that after I whoop his ass that they don't cut him. I hope they let him build himself back up so I can whoop his ass again. That's it. That's all. That's all I have to say about that situation. Okay. Um, so I guess that was going to be actually be one of my next questions was, is he still on your radar? What would you think of his fight at UFC 238? I know it, I know that he came up on the losing end, but I was entertained by Ivanov and Ty, Ty Voss. I think both guys... Went out there and, and uh, in fact, I love the whole card, but uh, I love it when heavyweights are moving around and testing each other, you know. Uh, so, so it sounds like he definitely is still on your radar. Yeah, man. Uh, so the participation trophy goes to Ty Ty Baker. <laughs> uh, like, I don't care. Like, like, come on, man. This is a fight game. He does what I do the best, and that's stand up. You know what I mean? So um, I can't wait to get in there against him and, uh, yeah, shut him down. Shut him up. Because at the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day, you know, he was out, you know, talking shit. And now he's trying to play victim. But when we get in that cage, I'm going to victimize him. Chastise him. <laughs> um, when do you think you'll be fighting again? I know August was a target date for you. You wanted a camp with, with DC, and you also just wanted some time to do the proper weight cut. So that seems to be coming along. DC's obviously in camp. Are you in camp with him? And... Uh, when when will you know? I guess when and where you'll be fighting again. So uh, how? Okay, so they tried to cut me for what? They tried to cut me because I told them that uh, I would fight Walt Harris in August. That right. was the thing. They tried to get me to fight him July fourteenth. 
what I did not want to do was uh, make unnecessary cuts because I wanted to get to the weight where I know that I will be a prime athlete. If a, if a people try to, you know, cut you because I would say you're trying to become better, do they want me, like, like, it, like, like, like it, it creates so many questions, and I'm an intelligent guy. So, you know, like, so I would say it like this. Things got handled, and uh, me and Tyler Tavesa, we got to go at it. Man, I would love to see I, that I, fight. I think, I think I, I think that that's that's and if he can't get extra time, he cannot get extra time because they tried to cut me for extra time. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I don't I don't know what cards are in August September. They, they gave him six months after he got TKO when he was he when he was doing the bicycle on the bottom before he got TKO. And and they gave him six months. We're only really talking about one month. They wanted you in July. You were willing to exactly. go in August. Did it just it, become a pissing match bro. or something like that? Or, or that that, that yeah, seems so like hey, minuscule. Hey, 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 hey. That's that's between God. Like I, I don't. I'm not really going to you know comment on that part of it. But that's just one of those things where you can't give him extra time. You know what I mean? Like he's he's on a two fight losing streak. He's not the guy. He can't be the A side. They took my ranking. But he can't be the ace side. The guy lost twice in a row. He lost to number 15, 14 guy. I lost to the number three guy. Yeah. We got to start. We got. We, we, we have to start actually speaking sense. And the guy says I'm not championship material. I know you heard the interview from Dana. Yeah. You know, and that's that's honestly, that's a, I, I'm a guy where I make comments. You know, I'm not going to sit back and I'm not going to be shy. I'm not, I'm not going to snitch nobody. I'm not going to out nobody. That's not my style. But I'll, I'll always stand up for myself. And if I'm not championship material with the way I move, I'm fast. I'm a lightning bolt, you know, and I'm a guy where if you look at me, I've always learned and I've always grown and I've always conquered. Just look at my track record. You feel me? So it's one of those things where, like, it's nonsense. And if I'm not, I mean, there's guys like, like Ty Tavesa and like they said that I'm a, I'm a, he said I'm a, I'm a, I'm a clout, what's the, a clout what? A clout chaser. No, motherfucker. I'm a clout snatcher. I'm a snatch your shit. <laughs> well, Big Pretty, I, I will say this. I will say this. Yeah. I heard that interview with yeah. Aaron Bronstetter, and he asked Dana White the question, and he included your name, Elias Theodoro, and then he said, and others. But I really feel yeah. like that was more directed towards yeah. Elias. And I, and, and I don't mean it disrespectful to him, but he's actually put in 11 fights yeah. now. And I think it yeah, can be fair to say he's probably not headed that way. Whereas with you, I think the trajectory's there at four and one, a southpaw that can throw hands. Yeah, the, you know, but, I, but I feel like you like, no like disrespect to Elias. No disrespect to Elias at all. Like I don't know Elias personally, mm-hmm. but everything I hear, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. So this is no disrespect. But don't fucking put me in the same breath of another man. I'm my own man. Yeah. Because then, then people can misconstrue shit and, and run off with tabloid headlines and shit. That's not cool. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Put some respect on my name. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, you're right. Uh, I, I thought maybe he could have taken a, maybe taken the answer one by one or, or who knows what. But, uh, again, I see yeah, a guy that's... Right. That's, that, that's between him and G.O.D. Maybe he was in a rush. Yeah. You know, again, I'm not, I'm not damn dating the man. You know, nothing that I thought. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't know Dana personally like that, so... You know, so as far as I know, he's a good guy. He, he, every time I've been around him, he's been cool to me. I ain't got no negative energy, you know. So, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, but you have to differentiate because I'm not a guy who, who takes that type of shit. I don't take that well because, yeah, disrespect is disrespect. I don't give a fuck who disrespects you. Correct, yeah. Um, Justin Willis, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio, 4-1 and one in the UFC uh, and looking to still fight Tai Tuivasa. That 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 we started last year when you were fighting Mark Hunt, and apparently there was uh, some stuff that he, escalated. He started it. He ran his mouth. He ran his mouth, and he always ran his mouth when I was booked. When I had somebody, the reason why look, 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 I leave all my faith up to God. That's it. That's all. So again, another reason why. I did not take a fight. It doesn't matter who the name was because I, I was waiting in horizon for Ty Tuivasa. So I can be free. He can be free. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. This is chess, not checkers. <laughs> All right. Come on, man. If you, if you gonna talk to talk, walk to walk. I'm not. I'm not that type of guy. Yeah. He's gonna have to catch these hands. Yeah, I, catch I, me outside. How about that? <laughs> Idiot. Hey, but. <laughs> By the way, if, if August can't happen, are you into that stadium show in Australia? You've been the away team before, and you did well. Would you do that again, or do you feel like once hey, is enough? Man, hey, 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 we, hey, me and the UFC going to have to, you know, sit down in person. I'm going to have to go to Vegas, and we're going to have to talk, and, you know, speak man to man. I like woman it. Woman to woman, I don't know who all up there, you know what I mean? But like, we're going to have to sit like there, we're going to have to talk. But I'm, 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 I'm open to everything, man. I've been there before. I love it. You know, actually, um, I was unofficially ordained. The, uh, <laughs> the last king of Australia. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, what do you have for Big Pretty? I'm glad he went that route of coming to Vegas because the first thing I started thinking of was we've interviewed him a lot over the phone, mm-hmm. but it was so different having him here and just speaking face to face. Right. And what, what you I w- felt the spirit, those. Well, that's what I, what I was going to ask you, Justin, is like, do you feel like maybe some face to face time? If you and Dana just went out and had a dinner. Do you think maybe he would get you a little better? Yeah, I, I think a lot of people they don't want to get to know me because you know I think I think I I intimidate a lot of people because of the simple fact of how I am. And you know, God made me the way I am. I accept everybody for the way they am. They are. So if you don't give me a chance and get to know me as an individual, shame on you. Shame on you. And don't have no motherfucking opinions of me without sitting down and actually getting a chance to talk to me. That's idiotic. That's foolish. Here's the other maybe thing. Maybe I can learn something. Maybe you can learn something. Here's the and other even thing. Even swap is no swindle. When you, uh, when you were here, you shared some things about your personal life growing up. And I thought about the situation yeah. you're in. And, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but because things were uh-huh. like that and you were able to get over all that stuff when you were younger, do these type of things that, that perhaps like the media or other fighters take as being like a really big thing... Do you just, can you like not really brush them off, but are they just not as big of a deal because of what you had to go through early on in life? I've been homeless. I've been shot at. I've been <laughs> stabbed with a, a, a ice pick. I've been, you know, come on, man. Like, I've been through the ringer, man. Seen dead bodies, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, this stuff, these dudes, I'm, I'm built different, you know. So, again, only thing I do, I learn, I grow, I conquer. I sit back and I hear all the talk. I listen. I listen. I don't get frustrated. I'm not mad. I just get more passionate about it. I get deeper. I get better. I get, I get, I get, I get, I get closer to me. I build me. I worry about me. That's it. I told people, like, I, like yeah, I, I appreciate the fans because the fans... Without them, you know, we couldn't do all these sports. The circus couldn't be what the circus is. You feel me? But mm-hmm. I really do this for my, my my close friends, my family. Like like that like that's it. That's all. Like that's it. And and, 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 and at the end of the day, give glory to God. Hey, Justin. That's it. Justin, and, when you when you think about Tai Tuivasa and the actual fight, when you play it out in your head. Is the finish always the same, or do you have different scenarios every time? To be honest with you, man, I'm, I'm going to give a, a world a world exclusive to you guys, okay? And that is, is like I believe that I was doing yoga, and it helped me in so many ways because I became more flexible. But it, while I was doing it, it made me kind of docile. That makes sense? At peace, at ease, you know, tranquility. So it taught me a lot. It, it, it helped me a lot with, you know, it did. But at the same time, I think it... it it, it hid away that that beast inside. It, it, it hit, like you know, you get what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. you know, I've stopped that, but I've, I've I've adopted other things. I've done other things. I'm just growing, man. I'm growing. I I knew I will grow as an athlete. And I will become better, and that's on the verge of becoming the greatest. I knew there'd be a bump on the road. I knew it. All right. Well, but when, I have to stay on the path. That's it. When do you anticipate the flight out to Vegas to have this meeting? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, hey, man, I'm putting it out in the air with you guys. So, okay. you know, it's one of those things where you know we got we got to like like I already got my uh, I already got my information and my conclusion on other things. But you know, I want to sit down and I want to talk like like man. Right. I I think that's I think that's the so best you, way. I think I really think it's the best way because, like Go said, uh, 
your impression in uh, in person is different from on the phone. I mean, very similar as well, but still, I, I believe eye to eye, man to man. I think you guys can accomplish a lot in that meeting, and I think uh, you would get probably that Tui Vasa fight because he loves that type of fight. You know, especially what you guys have built up. Uh, and again, man, you're a qual. You're 31 year old Southpaw who's got hands who who works hard, who's part of a gym that's got other great heavyweights. You guys push each other, all that stuff. So I, I you need to you and need I'm to be I'm in the UFC. Getting better. Remember, I didn't come from this. Like you get what I'm saying? Like I, I didn't like I grew up just fighting, like just fighting. Like 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 bro, you could I like, I could not do nothing for for a long time, and you just get me a fight. I'm gonna whoop some ass. That's just what I grew up having to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I, again, I knew I was going to grow. I was going because I, I mean I do things. A very peculiar way, and that's okay because it's, it's me. Just like you do things in a, a certain ways in certain situations, right. just like everybody else. All right. But I, fa- I I found my path. Well, thank you so much for doing a catch up with us. It's always great to just hear you, and we feed off your energy as well. That's why I said I got to stand up for this interview because Big Pretty gets me all pumped up. You know, hey, I, I hey, just hey, love your hey, outlook on come, life and everything. Hey, when I come to Vegas, I got to come in there, bro. All right. Done. Come out on a Tuesday so you can do the Dana White Contender Series, catch some fights, sit down with Dana, and then come do our show. Um, hey, but, that's a great idea. I, I, might, I might be up there next Tuesday, bro. There you go. <laughs> All right. We'll keep, we'll keep Tuesday open then. Uh, thanks, Big Pretty, for the time, All my right. man. All right. Uh, I hope you have a great night, yeah. and uh, we'll, we'll catch up soon. All right, brother. All right. We'll see you. All right, on Twitter, at Big Pretty MMA. That's awesome that he's down, by the way, 25 pounds. Mm-hmm. We got to go to a quick break. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156. We'll be back to wrap things up. We'll give you an update on the NHL uh, game here as well and, and uh, give you a preview of what's up for tomorrow.
Get away, ladies. Well, even though we had Jael, I really enjoyed this show. How about you guys? Yeah, I thought it was fun. I thought we took it to another level. Yeah. The next level. I'm just bullshitting, Jael. It's great to have you aboard. You know what, though? Uh, it's the end of the second period, so there's 20 minutes left in the hockey game, and it's still 2 nothing, St. Louis. And right now, I just saw a dude in a really nice Boston Bruins hockey jersey hanging his head slowly, probably walking to the restroom. Maybe he was heading in that direction. Mm-hmm. I wonder how that's got to feel, man. You know, like, like Raptor fans probably have a little bit of that feeling, too. They were, you know, so close and at home, and now, you know, at least they have two more games to to wrap that thing up, but this is it. 20 minutes. Like, they're going to take a, a break here uh, in between periods, and then uh, that's it. I will say this. If you are going to lose in a big game like that, Vegas is a great place to be to drown those sorrows. True. This that is dude, the best place to be. That dude's going to wind up at the Spearman Rhino, yeah. drowning his sorrows. And the, and the guys over there in the <laughs> St. Louis Blues, they'll wind up at Spearman Rhino as well. <laughs> <laughs> the VIP room. Let's talk to Showtime in Tennessee. What's up, Showtime? It's yo time. Hey, what's going on, fellas? What's up? Oh, n- nothing, mess, man. Enjoying the show, like always, man. Just wanted to make a couple quick comments on the card from this past weekend. Go ahead. Man, um, Cejudo, man, that, that guy is tough. I mean, shit. To do what he did on one leg, man. And, that is impressive. Basically, yeah, I mean, very, very impressive, man. The guy is tough. He doesn't quit. I, I think he kind of broke Marlon's will, man. I think because Marlon gave him everything he wanted early in that fight, man. And, and Cejudo was able to keep going and dig down deep and, and to win that fight like that, man. That's that's very impressive. I think he, if he wins a couple more fights, we're going to have to put him on that list, man, because – Winning that gold medal in the Olympics, man, that's big. We got guys that were Olympic wrestlers, but none of them w- was able to capture the gold. That's a whole nother level of yeah. having that gold, you know. And um, You ain't lying. I, and I and I'll tell you what, another Warren, thing that was impressive, too, was he. so he's got the ankle sprain, and how about the way his legs were getting battered by Marlon's kicks in the first round? Mm-hmm. So right away, those kicks can turn the tide, you know, of the game physically and mentally on top of the injury, but he buckled down and bit on that mouthpiece, and and in round two was, you know, different. Plus, great corner, broken. corner advice, too. Continue, Showtime. Yeah. Proceed. Oh, yeah. Hey, check this out, man. That, that, that goes with having that good corner, man. You, have, you hear a lot of stuff, man, that guys in the corner basically – not telling the fighter anything, man. But when you got a good corner, man, that guy has been real amazing too with what he did for the for the Pit Bull brothers and all that. Now coming in and and getting a, another double champ, man. But I want to make a cu- quick comment on Suarez, man. I think if if she fought somebody like Andrade, man, with that the way and Jessica just can keep coming forward and doesn't get tired, I think that's a bad matchup for her, man. I, I think I think she would get stopped. Because Und- Jessica wouldn't be as easy to take down, you know, as, as, as the fight this weekend, man. In that third round, she didn't have nothing left. Yeah. I think she would get stopped, honestly. Well, she also had a neck injury, apparently. And so her, her heart wasn't too broken when they said Andrade is going to be fighting Wheelie Zhang. It'll give her time to maybe address that. It's an injury she's had coming in to the, to the fight. And then she injured it, I guess, during the fight. But you're right. Uh... Nina was able to do a few things to keep the fight. You know, the longer you're on the feet with Tatiana Suarez, the better your chances. And, uh, you know, Nina, towards the end, I think showed a lot. She sh- showed a couple openings there that maybe other fighters could take advantage of. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the call, though, Showtime. Thank you, sir. Great to hear from Showtime in Tennessee. But we got to wrap up. It's it. That's it, man. Two hours gone by quick. We won't be able to give you an update on the hockey game. So don't forget what I was reading off earlier about where you can catch uh, the game. Just look, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but the NHL Network Radio Channel is 91, so I believe you can just go straight there. Bruins fans and Blues fans, there's one period left. Big thank you to Justin Willis, Andre Marrero, and Eddie Wineland for their time. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, with another edition of MMA Junkie Radio. For Jael and Goes, I'm George. Have a nice evening, and go out there and be a champion.